convince others about freedom. Ronald Reagan said, freedom is always one generation away from extinction. It is not passed on to our children through their bloodstream. It must be taught. It must be example, exemplified before them. And it must be died for if necessary. And you know what? Shame on us. Shame on us, sir. I, it would be so easy for us to say, it's their fault. I'm going home and I'm going to put out my flag. We lie to ourselves. And I'm not going to lie to you. We, the people, get the type of government that we deserve. So it's our fault. It's our fault. So the answer to that is it starts here. It starts in Mayo. It starts in Cross City. It starts in Lago. It starts in Perry. And it starts in great towns, main streets all around this country. And it says, if you're going to represent us, you are going to have to be one of us. And you are going to have to simplify our values. And if you don't, you will never see a second term. God knows you'll never see a seventh term. The majority, majority of the people in the country are fair to get their uh, important issues in, uh, from uh, uh, TV shows. Yep. Um, what, else, what are some of those ones? Uh, maybe the ones on... Uh, no? No, no, not the network, but the... Uh, Cable shows? Uh, you, no, no, it's not the cable shows, but it's the, it's the, uh, all the shows, uh, the main, uh, TV shows. Look, Bill, you know all about them. What is that? TV shows? No, no, no. ABC but, News, you mean? No, 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 no.
You know, not everybody's a Paul Revere. But there are some Paul Revere's in this, in this pavilion today. A Paul Revere, if you're one, and you know what I'm talking about, Paul Revere. Paul Revere knew a lot of people. He was what they called a connector. He knew everybody. That's why we remember Paul Revere and not William Dawes. There were two men that set out that night on horseback, and we remember Paul Revere. Paul Revere knew everybody, and he knew where to go to warn them that the British were coming. Paul Revere was a maven. Maven is a Yiddish word for gatherer of knowledge. Paul Revere read. He studied. He learned a lot of things about a lot of things. And thirdly, Paul Revere was a salesman. He knew how to talk to everybody, tell them a little bit about a lot of things, and then sell them on it. What we need is we need a country of Paul Revere to take what you know, to take what you hold to be true, and spread that news that freedom, freedom is not dead. Freedom is coming back to life. And we are taking it back and convincing people, convincing people, not just be interested in our future, but be committed to it. And commitment means you're going to tell the good news, the good news of freedom. So it starts here. It starts here. <clears throat> how do I, the question was, how do I feel on immigration? First of all, I think we got to seal our borders. First and foremost. <laughs> there are evil out there. There is evil out there that wishes us harm. There is evil out there that would love more than anything for a bomb to go off underneath that birthday cake. They would love that. They would love that. We've got to seal our borders. Now, that goes back. I default to common sense. You and I were in the middle of a lake and the boat started leaking. We wouldn't start bailing. We'd start looking for a hole. Now, we would get to the bailing later. But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for a hole. And right now, the hole in our boat that is America is pouring over that border. That's the hole. Now, once we've sealed that hole, then we can talk about bail. And the very first place I would go to bail is I would go to our state penitentiaries. 85% of those that are incarcerated in California right now are here illegally. I would load them up. I'd put them on a barge. It wouldn't be air conditioned. It wouldn't be. You, it wouldn't have cable. You'd have sea rations. And you would be sent back to where you came from. That may not be politically correct, but I've never been accused of being politically correct. But, but more importantly, we've got to have a government that allows people who want to come to this country legally. We have to have a system that allows honest, hard-working people, immigrants, to come here like our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents Many of them came through Ellis Island. They came here wanting to be an American. Ma'am, it is incompetent. It is incompetent. Well, there is it's there. What if they can do that? And that starts with us. That starts with us. <coughs> to have someone spend 10 to 12 years to come into this country as an immigrant is incompetent. It's incompetent. I call it what it is. We mailed you a package six weeks ago. It still hasn't been delivered. <laughs> and they want my health care? <laughs> Case in point. The immigration, people need to be able to come here and they need to know, okay, that within a fair amount of time, because of competent workers, that they are going to be able to to realize the dream of living in a country called America. Now, when you come here, the expectation is that you speak English. We don't have enough money now to do what we got to do. Not, not to mention publish 14 versions of the driver's license manual because of 14 different languages. I was a summer missionary in the Philippines back when I was 19 years old. 